The history of Dota 2 is one of greatness. Not yet! Sideline of Thaw! Liquid are doing it! They're gonna take it! I waited four fucking years for this day. Guys? This time we're gonna rewrite uh, yes. history. Yeah. EG might be able to do this! The evil genius is their whole thing! Ravage on everyone! The black hole as well! Flight of Evan turns it around! Ravage as well! Stolen by Danny! Why are you kidding me? TNT have done it! The dream, the reality! But it's also a history that's not exempt from the absurd, the embarrassing, and the controversial. From game ruining bugs to the biggest of professional scandals. I Eerie. cannot believe it! Let's look back into the most hilarious balancing blunders, the most shocking news, and the lowest points of Dota 2's storied past. Match fixing and intentional throws are a hazard of any competitive game, and we're kicking things off with two of the most infamous examples in Dota 2 history. On June 14th, 2013, Rock's KIS took on Z Rage in an online match in Star Ladder Star Series 6th season. Despite being the favorites, Rock's lost the game in suspicious fashion, with a number of highly questionable engages and buybacks throughout the game. They actually want to try to go in with this, BCZ. It was already very low to begin with. Three seconds set up on Solo as well. They just run in here to die. What's up with that? That's good not question. good. The surprise upset was investigated by Star Ladder officials, and two days later, it was determined that Alexei Solo Berzin had intentionally thrown the match after placing a bet against his own team on eGamingBets.com. <laughs> для выявления мошенничества, собственно, предоставлять э, данные. Э, они предоставили IP-адрес. Мы его проверили, он совпал с IP-адресом, э, собственно, Соло. Соло publicly apologized for throwing the match and admitted to using his girlfriend's account to place a $100 bet against his team. And on June 21st, Rox removed Solo from their roster. Star Ladder had initially handed Solo a lifetime ban for his actions, but ended up reducing his ban to one year following his public apology apology and cleared up any suspicion against the organization and its other players. Ну, у меня с ней только неприятные ассоциации, на самом деле это очень плохой поступок. Я вот недавно давал интервью тоже Факеру, как бы извинялся уже перед тем комьюнити, перед теми, кто будет смотреть, перед нашими фанатами, перед хейтерами, перед теми, потому что это, ну, действительно очень плохой поступок. Я преть как бы не собираюсь больше такими вещами заниматься. И вот Solo's winnings would have totaled $322, and the community wasted no time in making the number 322 a popular meme throughout esports, often sarcastically referenced when a player is playing so badly it is borderline suspicious. Don't do it, Zai, you're too young! What are you doing? <laughs> But a year later, a highly publicized match-fixing scandal took place that ended with much more dire consequences. In October of 2014, in Southeast Asia's Synergy League, the heavily favored Aero Gaming lost to Australian squad Can't Say Whips, prompting an investigation by Dota 2 Lounge. The examination uncovered several bets placed by individuals associated with the team leading Aero Gaming to be disqualified from the tournament. Further investigations uncovered that the bets originated from accounts belonging to the girlfriends of DDZ and Lance, resulting in the two players receiving lifetime bans from the event. Soon after the investigation, Aero Gaming protested the players' innocence, providing Synergy League with chat logs and statements regarding the situation in DDZ's name. However, the logs were proven to be doctored and the statements false, and as a result, Synergy League extended the bans to Aero Gaming's entire organization. As a result of the whole debacle, Aero Gaming and all of its players were removed from the lineup for the Summit 2's SEA qualifiers and are still banned from Synergy League. Shortly after the incident, DDZ took to Facebook to publicly apologize on behalf of the players, admitting that they had 322'd and that the statements and chat logs provided to Synergy League were forged by Arrow's management and not written by the players. A few days later, Dota website 2P reported that team manager Jaren Gan had threatened to sue Lance and DDZ for $8,000 each for breach of contract should they not retract their confession. Aero Gaming would eventually release its entire roster. 
But that wasn't the end of it. On March 28th, 2015, Valve stepped in, handing out permanent bans to all former members of Aero Gaming from Valve-sponsored events, including the International. While there are other examples of Dota 2 match-fixing, and still some we might not even know about, Aero Gaming and Solos 322 are among the most memorable. Bugs come and bugs go, but some remain in infamy for just how ridiculous they are. Of all the bugs in Dota 2's history, one stands above the rest for both how broken and straight up hilarious it was. In patch 6.75, Chen's abilities received a minor tweak as the ability to send allies back to base was moved off Holy Persuasion and back to Test of Faith. But in this process, something broke in the game. For some reason, Holy Persuasion, the ability used to control creeps, now worked on Roshan. You'd think that having Roshan, with his thousands of health, crushing basic attacks and abilities would be a bit strong to have as a pet. And you'd be right. The discovery spread like wildfire, and pretty soon, level 1 heroes, towers, and neutral creeps were falling to Roshan's relentless attack. Basically, whichever team had a Chen would have free reign of the map from minute one. In all but the rarest of times, that would lead to a dominant victory. Within hours of the bug's discovery, Valve issued a hotfix, ending Chen's very brief reign of terror. Now nearly five years old, this bug remains one of Dota's most iconic. While it generated plenty of salt at the time of its release, today you have to laugh at its absurdity. The International 2014 set records for its $10 million prize pool, and with that much money, teams were looking to gain every advantage possible, pouring hours into carefully crafting winning strategies that would make them millionaires. So when a Chinese news crew leaked team strategies during the tournament, you could imagine that some people were pretty pissed. The outrage stemmed from a Weibo post made by a user known as Dr. Kleiber, who posted a passionate open letter explaining the situation. According to the post, the crew of the website GameFi made their way into Team DK's off-limits game room and started rolling, despite having no permission from Team DK or Valve to do so. Initially posted to Yuku, the video was translated to English and submitted to Gosu Gamers, spreading across the community. While both videos were taken down after a furious interview by Team DK Coach 71, the video had spawned mirrors and copies all over the internet. According to 71, the video revealed DK's core strategy and drafting ideas for not just the game in question, but the entire tournament. <laughs> To make matters worse, the Weibo post also indicated that GameFi had posted a similar video on June 11th, where they recorded Invictus Gaming's team conversation. Thankfully, Ferrari430 noticed the camera and left the room, meaning not too much of IG's discussion was leaked. Following the leak, Ice 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 joined his coach in expressing his displeasure with GameFi. Did you guys, or did your coach, manager, uh, 71, did he make a complaint to Valve once this news was made? Yeah, he was raging. He wanted to find talks to beat them up. Like the He's going to beat them up? Yeah, the GameFi people. A day after the outrage, GameFi posted an apology to their Weibo where they begged the community for forgiveness. In compliance with Valve's rules, the personnel who were involved in the leak did not continue reporting on the event, although GameFi still worked for the remainder of the tournament. The community, upon hearing of the leak, was understandably furious at the journalists in question. The outrage prompted GameFi's producer to post another apology, this time directly defending the well-intentioned reporter from whom the leak resulted. The overall impact of the GameFi leak on TI4's outcome is hard to extrapolate, 
but it's even harder to deny its influence on Team DK, who headed into the tournament as one of the clear favorites. Needless to say, it is one of the largest scale leaks in Dota 2's history, and remains the most memorable scandal to emerge from the international. The term game breaking can be thrown around loosely. He's gonna try it again, can he? You got him that time! See you in the base move! Welcome home! But in Dota 2, one particular bug stands out for quite literally breaking the game. In patch 6.81, Vengeful Spirit received a change to her aura that would apply a damage debuff to any hero that killed her. Simple, right? Unfortunately, a bug caused the game to instantly crash if the aura debuff was applied to any non-player. Essentially, a death to creeps or towers would force everyone out of the lobby. The bug was exploited almost instantly much to the frustration of a large part of the community, as griefers intentionally suicided to prevent themselves from losing, ruining countless games. To no one's surprise, the issue was hotfixed by Valve within a day of its discovery after massive community outcry. While many bugs have appeared since this rage inducer from 2014, few have had the catastrophic consequences of 6.81's Venge Aura. While Dota has had its fair share of bad tournaments in the past, none have captured the community's ire quite like the Shanghai Major. Where to begin? It seemed like every hour saw a new issue arise. As the days rolled on, the event went from rage-inducing... Yeah, the timing. Has fallen. Did they say GG? They, they uh, definitely um, didn't. ...to almost comedic in its ineptitude. You when you're actually doing when you're actually going <laughs> <laughs> Between the wealth of production issues, logistical nightmares, and endless delays, nothing seemed to be going right for anyone involved. And that doesn't even cover all the problems, such as players' keyboards going missing, talent not receiving food, water or transportation to the venue, the laughable VIP room. So, uh... They've added some chairs since I last came in. Not so soundproof booths, and fans and cosplayers being asked to leave the venue. We could go on, but you get the idea. There's been so many delays and problems, and it really makes like our game and what we're doing here look bad, which is unfortunate for everyone involved. Because uh, the production is not great. We're gonna continue here with one more match today, though. Evil Genius MVP Phoenix, and we're gonna go continue with that after a small break, so we'll see you soon. Soon. Eventually, Valve fired production company Perfect World, and PGL was hired to salvage the rapidly sinking ship. And while PGL saved the show, it was too late. The Shanghai Major was already going to go down in history as one of Dota 2's most embarrassing events. It really is a shame that the event went so wrong, because against the backdrop of disaster, the games were fantastic and the casters and talent poured their all into it. In some cases, pulling double or even triple shifts to make sure that the show would go on. But while all that might be enough to put Shanghai on the wrong side of history, it was the firing of James Too Good Harding that elevated the Major to a new level of infamy. On day two, Desco's Too Good was unexpectedly replaced on the panel. While the change raised some eyebrows in the community, since Too Good was seen as an entertaining, if slightly provocative host, there had been little to suggest that his off-brand style of humor would be grounds to have him fired. It's not just me here to talk about the do's and don'ts of Dota 2 and the cans of cunts of the teams. The uh, Chinese hotel disab uh, disabled pornography. Mr. Wang's <laughs> amazing wheelchair antics were pretty amazing. It shouldn't be Sir 2G, it should be Old 2G. Thank you. Oh, old 2G. <laughs> you can fuck off, uh, Winter. Uh, cons for C-Deck, they're stubborn and only have one D. Ha, ha, ha.
But it wasn't just his firing that got the community up in arms. It was the inflammatory response to the situation on Reddit by Valve co-founder and president Gabe Newell. In that statement, Newell called too good an ass, while offering little in the way of an explanation for his dismissal. Too good responded to the post, suggesting that he was not just removed from the panel for his raunchy humor, but for a history of conflict with Valve employees and producers. He came in here trying to be himself, and you know you can appreciate that, but him being himself just isn't what Valve wanted to be for the face of their major, and that's their call. Regardless of the reasons or any past history between James and Valve, the manner in which Newell and Valve handled the dismissal and the community fallout it generated has become infamous. To this day, is an ass is a high tier meme within the Dota 2 scene. Despite the subsequent Manila, Boston, and Kiev majors all being praised for their fantastic production values, the aftertaste left by the Shanghai major will never be forgotten by Dota 2 fans. So let's check out some of the highlights. Your face is a beautiful highlight. Yep. <laughs> Broken hero releases are a pitfall of any MOBA, and Dota 2 owns arguably the most outrageous one of all time. The introduction of Centaur Warrunner into Dota 2 in October of 2012 was basically a disaster. He was unkillable levels of tanky, dealt ridiculous damage, and could chain stun into death with ease. His opening day win rate in Dota 2 was staggering at over 67%. The hero was a complete and total nightmare to play against. Triple part of the reason for this unheard of dominance was that, as part of the port from Dota to Dota 2, Centaur was given a new ultimate. Instead of Great Fortitude, which gave flat strength, he received Stampede, a global ability on a tiny cooldown that gave all allies maximum movement speed, a ridiculous stun upon contact with an enemy and massive damage. Things were so bad that just four days later, Centaur received nerfs, specifically to Stampede. More nerfs would be dealt to the hero in December, removing the stuns from both Double Edge and Stampede. The hero had finally been brought back into line. Needless to say, the memory of Centaur stomping players into oblivion in 1v3 scenarios is pretty funny in retrospect, but easily makes it one of Dota 2's most iconic broken updates. Hopefully, we never see such a busted hero release ever again. Long shall my name be remembered. Since its formation in 2014, Team Secret has been a hotbed of controversy. From public roster disputes to reports of a hostile team environment, it seemed like for a long time, Secret couldn't keep their name out of the news. And not in a good way. Even going back to their inaugural roster, messy breakups have been all too frequent. From No Tail and Fly's bitter removal, to We and Misery's very public exits, changing rosters has rarely been smooth sailing for Captain Puppy and the rest of Team Secret's management. A team of superstars as they are, but yet to gel properly, perhaps. But if dramatic roster moves were the only thing that they were known for, Secret would not make this list. On February 16th, 2016, Team Secret's now former manager, Evany Chang, took to Twitlonger and posted a lengthy account of her time with the team, where she alleged that Team Secret had missed making payments to players and staff and neglected to hand out tournament winnings in a timely manner. Later that year, Eternal Envy made similar accusations, alleging that that he had yet to be paid for a number of tournaments. Additionally stating that team director Kamal Sadakoglu and captain Puppy had committed other abuses. Eternal Envy claimed that the organization was secretly removing 10% of all player winnings without previous consent. 
that players had never signed contracts and that Puppy had physically bullied Wii, among other accusations. That same day, another former player, Misery, came forward, stating that the team had failed to pay him for numerous tournaments and claimed that he hadn't received agreed upon revenue from merchandise. A little more than a week later, Team Secret posted a response on their website simply titled Update, which, while not acknowledging any accusations directly, did admit that the organization had made mistakes attributed to its rapid growth. In March of 2017, Puppy would post his own twit longer, announcing the departure of Sadakoglu and apologizing to past members of the organization that felt they had been wronged, further claiming that all obligations to those individuals had now been met. Since then, Team Secret has settled down and kept their name out of negative news. But despite consistently being a strong team that has attracted serious talent over the years, the organization has yet to fully rehabilitate its image in the eyes of many community members. Thanks for watching. If you want to see some more iconic esports moments, subscribe to our channel and let us know what you'd like to see next.